When you try to stay on the surface of the water, you sink. But when you try to sink, you float. And that insecurity is the result of trying to be secure. Alan Watts. What does it mean to think in reverse? It means starting from what you want instead of where you are. This is a metaphor that can be used when thinking about goals and plans for your life, but also about your mental health. What is the backward law? The backward law is a principle that was articulated by Alan Watts. The basic idea of the backward law is that you start at the end. You'll have everything necessary to get there. This may seem like an odd statement at first, but when you think about it, it makes sense. The goal of this post is to explain how thinking in reverse can help improve your life and make your emotions healthy. The human predicament is a collective delusion that tells us that acquiring external things or changing external circumstances such as the objects of money, physical adjustments, or changes in scenery will fundamentally free us from our sense of lack. The law of backwards induction demonstrates that the opposite is true. We feel deprived as a result of our dissatisfaction with current circumstances. The more dissatisfied we are, the more we suffer. The more change we need in order to be satisfied, the less satisfied we are. Imagine that you've set a goal for yourself to become a millionaire because you believe it will make you happy. Setting such a goal only means that achieving it will take a lot of effort. It also means that being so far from it will make you unhappy because you realize how insufficient you are in comparison to what you want to be. Or to put it another way, as best-selling author Mark Manson put it, pursuing something only reinforces the fact that you lack it in the first place. The more you desperately want to be rich, the more poor and unworthy you feel, regardless of how much money you actually make. As a result, Increasing the amount of money required to be happy will make you feel even more inadequate and, as a result, even more miserable. However, lowering the threshold will reduce your feelings of inadequacy because the goalpost will be much closer to where you are. Nonetheless, we continue to set the bar high, often far above our current position, resulting in a deep and lasting sense of inadequacy. The human proclivity to pursue more as a cure for the itch while simultaneously maintaining the itch through that pursuit actually appears illogical. According to German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, this is actually the case. We want what we want, Schopenhauer concluded, because we, like everything else in the universe, are manifestations of the will to live, or simply the will. And according to the philosopher, the will is an irrational, aimless, never-ending striving that causes us to live a life of suffering that cannot be alleviated by anything the world has to offer. As a result, we have a pathological desire for more than we require, driven by a constant sense of scarcity. Lack is perceived by the mind because it believes that the present moment is insufficient, something is missing, but it is unsure what. As a result, we continue to seek solace in situations that we perceive to be more pleasurable. However, once we arrive, we find ourselves in the same dissatisfied state from which we attempted to flee. According to Schopenhauer, and I quote, Thus, also, every keen pleasure is an error and an illusion, for no attained wish can give lasting satisfaction. The will, according to Schopenhauer, is what motivates us to strive and seek. However, following it never brings satisfaction because the will is the very thing that prevents us from achieving our goals. The negation of the will, according to Schopenhauer, is the only way to be truly content as it leads to a blissful, empty state free of striving. To put it another way, stop trying to get it, and you'll get it. So how can we get what we want? Or how can we use backwards law to our advantage? Accepting flaws makes you feel perfect. Accept loneliness, and you'll be content with your solitude. If you try to be perfect, you will be flawed. You're miserable by yourself if you try not to be lonely. It's a positive experience to accept a negative experience. Fighting a negative experience, on the other hand, means suffering twice. When you try to sleep, your efforts will keep you awake. You only fall asleep if you stop trying. You'll lose your breath if you hold your breath. However, if you let it go, it will continue on its own. We'll be happy when we stop trying to be happy and accept that we don't need anything more than what we already have. 
when we stop trying to be wealthy, we'll be able to live in abundance because we'll be content with where we already are, and anything extra will be a bonus. As a result, the only way to get what we want is to stop wanting it. This is what the law of backwards teaches us. There's a Zen story that explains how to clear cloudy water, which illustrates this paradoxical idea. Let's pretend we're looking for the bottom of a pond with cloudy water. We can stir the water or use our hands to remove the cloudiness, but neither of these methods will work. The only way to see its floor is to wait until the cloudiness dissipates and the water becomes clear. Our desires, thoughts, and dissatisfactions are represented by the cloudiness. Our grasping for happiness is symbolized by the stirring in the water in attempts to remove the cloudiness. Seeing the floor denotes contentment, which can only be achieved by leaving the water alone and allowing the cloudiness to dissipate on its own. And as a result, stop attempting to obtain it and you'll have it. Knowing about the workings of the backwards law does not imply that we should never set goals, have ambitions, or pursue change. There are probably an infinite number of reasons why we should make a change and not accept the status quo. However, the backwards law teaches us to not be deceived by the notion that pursuing happiness leads to happiness. It's the exact opposite. And with that knowledge, we can enter that blissful state of not wanting a little more frequently. Because as Alan Watts puts it, life's a mystery. It's not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced.